good morning all of you in this session here very relevant point is going to be discuss here in corona like problem that is epidemic and worldwide phenomena so in that problem a study of william wordsworth is very referential here william wordsworth makes a rational analysis of nature we have to make a rational analysis of nature because nature is everything without nature there is no possibility of man on this planet so all the context and reference let me start here so i think it will be very fruitful so let us maintain and propagate the material of discussion indian oriental conferences 12th session bsu 1943 1944 all congregated all the scholars universally regarded william wordsworth as a nature poet not only william wordsworth but also oriental poet sanskrit poet kalidas they say that both william wordsworth and kalidas have received a bare critical attention from perceptive critics to regard them as environmentalist in this present study it is better to know whether william wordsworth and kalidas were passionate worshippers of nature one point that comes to my screen of mind is that what method they adopt in their poetical works to be clever connoisseur of nature it is asserted that an active principle pervades the universe and its noblest seat in human soul as well as nature for both are essentially inseparable they are inseparable a divine blessing resides in all things in the stars of our heaven in the unending clouds in flowers and trees in every pebbly stone paths the brooks in the stationary rocks in the moving waters and in the invisible air in birds insects and animal kingdom william wordsworth observes in his epic the prelude as harmonious power with nature work these are the poetic lines have been taken from book first william wordsworth's epic prelude book one harmonious power with nature on sky earth river lake and sea sun shines and cloud warm wind and breeze all in one duteous task kalidas a sanskrit poet also rightly affirms that cool breeze coming from green fields is pleasant to everyone even the firmament seems to be pleasant the orchards are gladdened and yield more and healthy fruits poetic lines are kalidasian poetic lines are gentle will blow cool delightful breeze that sky with smell will fell of earth damped by rain sniffed by the tuskers making pleasant sound through big nostrils ripening big figs in forest all around in the present study we are to discuss what pieces of advice of william wordsworth and kalidas are to the world moreover we are to study what is the important role of nature in human life what form and aspect of nature observed by william wordsworth 
and Kalidas in their poetical works. However, since the origin of cosmos, nature is need of man to support his life to fulfill his various necessities. For man and nature are etymologically made up of the same elements of nature. They, they are inseparable. I have discussed. The chapter 1 reads of the Bible also that in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. The earth was without form and void. The darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering. The spirit of God was hovering over the face of waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. The sources of this cosmos, as studied in Vedas, are the same. Here, in this epidemic corona, that is a universal phenomena. So what is the central idea of the poets? That we have to make a rational analysis of nature. Then we have to adopt, we have to adopt in our life. We have to assimilate in our life. Because in these days, all of you, including I, have noticed that when all the scientists, arguments and other things were not working, they were totally failure. Only nature and nature that supports in the form of food, water, fresh air, sun heat. These are the basic primordial elements of nature. So here, the Rig Veda also presents the earliest picture of nature. The Vedic seers were attracted by nature. Its glamour, loveliness, helpfulness, regularity, virile and unassailable power and sometimes fear caught up their imagination. First of all, Agni appeared helpful to the Vedic people. Fire was kindled early in the morning. Its long red flames shot up in the air. The miraculous deeds of air appeared good and useful. Even animals attended the flaming fire with great pleasure in the winter evening. Fire was the most adorable, handsome, lustrous, and the most favorite guest of the householders. Its lovely aspect attracted the Vedic poets who began to worship it as God. Nature worship began with the worship of fire in the Vedic ages. Similarly, the seers were fascinated by the rising Usha morning like a handsome young maiden approached before them with smile and beaming complexion of an enchanting beauty. William Wordsworth and Kalidas both the poet who studied the sun the moon, the Venus, the Mars, the Jupiter, etc. Hereby we are to discuss. Were William Wordsworth and Kalidas the students of astrology? There is a charming account of the rainfall, gentle <coughs> rainfall in the context of Indra and Vrat. Vrat has restrained waters on the mountain. Here Vratra suggests water little clouds on the mountains. When the pressures of waters becomes heavy, clouds are settled by the wind and torrents of waters begin to pour from the peaks of mountains. The present studies will read were William Wordsworth and Kalidas aware of composition of system clouds? Yes. I have 
studied, we see in the epics of William Wordsworth and Kalidas that they studied the composition of clouds and all compositional aspects, atoms, iotas were minutely observed in their literature. It is embarrassedly imbibed in the literature. The rain song of the Atharvaveda represents a beautiful specimen of nature. The rishis longs for cold rains. The mass of black clouds wraps the sky being driven away by the wind. The rushing and gushing waters refresh and moisture the earth for herbs and crops to grow. These are the medicinal aspects that were also studied by the visionaries eyebrows of William Wordsworth and Kalidas. Long back, long, long back, they studied. So, in the present context, why man is going to ignore these natural aspects? Man has become very commercialized and this commercialization was totally collapsed universally. The USA, Russia, all European countries including Oriental countries, India also, all argumentative skills, scientific approaches collapsed simply because man does not care nature, that is our accounts. William Wordsworth, my teacher, my guide, has expressed well, nature never did betray the heart that loved her. Dear listeners, there is a complaint, there is a grudge against those who are very commercial minded persons, those persons who crumbled down the mountains, they cut the forests, soil erosion is taking place day by day, what is going to happen, it is heart touching, it is very weeping position, so we have to shun away all these things. Before our centuries, our philosophers and professors, William Wordsworth and Kalidas, our teachers, they have perceived that honey tongue rain of milk, cool breeze, beautiful flowers, bluer and bluer sky, rainbow, beautiful rainbow, charming, enticing, sky kissing, mountain series. They are integral part of human life. So why man does not understand the importance and significance of these natural aspects. Medicinal uses, herbs, these are provided by nature. Milk, honey, food, cloths, cotton, green shelter by trees. Such bounty aspects of nature God provided. Why man does not care for it? Our guide William Wordsworth in his one beautiful poem, The World is Too Much with Us, has explained well. The modern scene and the modern position and situation of the world have become very tarnished. So, what we have to do? 
respected audience spectators my request to you to adopt to assimilate to adopt a rational analysis of nature as studied by william wordsworth and be, even before william wordsworth keen observed by sanskrit poet kalidas so we have to make a thorough study we should start loving these natural aspects so some of questions are here william wordsworth and kalidas were connoisseur of nature some of questions are very important and very good in this perspective that can man live on this planet without nature is human life animate inanimate life possible without nature can animals live without water without trees forest flora kingdom all these are integral part inseparable to each other so my request a universal request to all that we should forget all narrow boundaries we should forget all narrow boundaries and we should assimilate the universal masses of sanskrit poet kalidas and english poet william wordsworth who is a romantic leader and propounder of romantic literature in william wordsworth so i think we have to follow the advices of william wordsworth and kalidas to adopt nature to assimilate nature long 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 back long long back it was said that nature is very useful so much honor was given to her much honor much respect as a result it happened as a result it happened that water is also supposed to be as semi god trees flowers people tree are supposed to be oxygen originator so they are also semi god they provide forest they provide food cotton herbs so they are in the form of semi god animals cows buffaloes and others too they provide milk they also provide food from all these angles we have to adopt universally and we have to worship nature if we will worship nature we will honor it if we honor it we will preserve it if we preserve nature environment will be saved and there will be no ecological disturbance there will be no more global warming problem so my dear spectators listeners my request to you that we have to adopt we have to assimilate nature as god it should be taught as a lesson to our coming generation so that they may not destroy knowingly or unknowingly deliberately or un undeliberately our coming generations our present generations and all the society members they should not they must not destroy nature because it is our again our guide will have words were say nature never did betray the heart that loved her